The Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, advancements in the treatment of gum disease. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. D. Gelorenzo. Dr. D., welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. So your patients call here. you uh, Dr. D. Dr. D. Is that right? Yep. Now, uh, before we get into today's topic, tell me about your practice. You're a periodontist. I'm a periodontist. I was trained uh, in my specialty at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, multidisciplinary training. We trained in prosthetics, orthodontics, um, so we're multifaceted in how we diagnose and treat. And my practice is very unique. I practice uh, 30 miles west of Philadelphia. I've been in practice 15 years. And my practice has potentially been designed to treat the whole patient. Okay, now we you do some unusual things at your practice. It's like a dental spa. Yep. Elaborate on that. Dentistry was very fear-based, and dentistry was a health issue, not only a tooth issue. And so we developed uh, an approach to treat the whole person. We have a nutritionist, we have reflexologists um, on staff who provide you with an opportunity to truly imbibe in the healing arts as well as receive really? treatment at so your office. So they like going to your office? Yeah, they really people do. People don't like going to the dentist, right? No, they don't. Do they tell you that still? They absolutely, that. yeah. We have high fear patients that come in and utilizing, you know, single visit protocol with sedation and our uh, massage therapists doing reflexology and Reiki and all of the things that we do. We tend to bring people to a state of comfort. Okay. Now with uh, gum disease, let's, let's uh, talk more about, you say that it's also misdiagnosed quite a bit yeah. or underdiagnosed. Or patients just flat out don't want to hear about it from their general dentist. They're in That's for right. cleaning or whatever. Expand on that. Yeah, I mean, gum disease, to get to a moderate to advanced state, it takes a long time. And, and really, one of the primary reasons that it progresses so far is that it's lack of diagnosis. Okay. Okay, lack of home care. Risk factors, diabetes, smoking. So there are a number of reasons why people are afflicted with the chronic disease. But don't you disease. know when you have it, though? Uh, a lot of or times not. people, no, they don't know. Uh, many people aren't in touch with their health. Um, they're unhealthy, their lifestyle is unhealthy. Uh, and so they don't know. And if they're not told by a dentist, they may not know. But even if they are told, it doesn't hurt. See, that's the key, Randy. It just doesn't hurt. So when something doesn't hurt, why address Interesting. it? Interesting. Okay, good. But So bleeding gums is definitely a sign. Right. But is it, I mean, with flossing, I mean... It, I mean, shouldn't Every, you have a little bit of bleeding or no? Yeah, you're saying you're gonna, yeah, you're going to bleed when you floss. But when you're brushing, when you have spontaneous bleeding, that's an abnormal event. So receding gums is another one of the uh, symptoms? Yes, Randy. The receding gums are a symptom of gum disease. Why, though? I mean, what's going on? Yeah, we're, we're losing bone. The infection is causing the loss of the attachment, the gum, the bone. And so you're going to see the necks of your teeth. And that, that, under many circumstances, isn't a normal situation. So bad breath as well could be another? Yeah, bad breath, a result of the bacterial infection under the gum line eventually will cause bad breath. Um, and that really affects people. I mean, people just, you can't imagine what they go through uh, with between having bad breath, loose teeth, they don't want to kiss, they don't want to be intimate. There's a whole variety of things going on with their self-esteem. Uh, certainly when they get to the point where it's moderate to advanced, um, they may very well not want to smile uh, and become very, very depressed. Do their over... teeth become loose? Yeah, their teeth become loose, difficulty eating, chewing. So hot and cold sensitivity. Sure. Randy, when the gum recedes, I mean, obviously, the bone is melted away, the tissue is melted away, and you've exposed the neck of the tooth. Um, Does this usually happen in the back of the mouth first? No, it'll happen no? in the front as well. But okay. you're going to have hot and cold sensitivity because you're losing the supporting structures around the teeth. This is so a, this infection, so I get this right, it's like, what is it bacteria? I mean, what do you guys call it? What is yeah, it? Yeah, gum disease is bacteria. So the bacteria right. underneath the gum line yep. starts eating away at the bone? Eating away at the bone, melting the gum. the gum. Yep. Is that right? So it provides an opportunity once the pockets form and the gum recedes. We have a bad neighborhood, essentially. Okay. All right. Now, one of the things you talked about on the phone, you said, Randy, I want to do this show, I want to do this interview, because by the time they get to me, oftentimes, their teeth have to go. That's right. And, you and say you want to get these people early on. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, and that's a challenge, right? That is a challenge. And again, because it doesn't hurt, 
the fear factor in dentistry, it's, it's so easy to treat disease early. But when, you know, when it comes time to let it go 5, 10, 15, 20 years, now people are coming in. And oftentimes, we can't save their teeth, Randy. We have to take their teeth out and place dental implants and provide them with perhaps teeth in a day, things okay. of that nature. But if people come in and they're proactive, we have an opportunity to treat them, remove the infection. Do gum disease patients know who they are? I mean, do they know? I mean, do, their general dentist said you have uh, these pockets or whatever. That's right. Most of them do if they're visiting their dentist regularly. But then there's a whole 50% of the population that does not visit the dentist. So we have 50% of the population that just doesn't go to the because dentist. Of the fear? Do you fear. do sedation, by the way? Yes. In your practice? Yeah, we do sedation. But it's primarily fear-related. Primarily fear related. So you're related. the specialist. Does somebody need a referral to go see you? No. Can they call we, you directly? Absolutely. Yeah. We have patients calling us directly every day. What, what is the, if you had to say, okay, top two misconceptions about gum disease or what? With the patient population. I think the number one misconception is it's only about my teeth. Because remember, any infection is very dangerous to your overall health. And that's why we've been for so Interesting. long okay. integrating nutrition. And overall health modification of risk factors into our therapeutic protocol because people really at this point we understand that periodontal infection and heart disease are closely related. Okay, so January. Why? Why? I mean, you know, they're most both people chronic have this inflammatory diseases. Yeah, but how? I mean, how is yeah. it affecting the heart, though? That's right. Help me um, understand that. Yeah, if you have an infection in your mouth every time you brush you're creating bacteria which enters the bloodstream and it's creating inflammation oh, elsewhere. Okay. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, Randy, that your oral health is a window into your well, oral health. Well, you're a dentist health. though, of course you're gonna think that though. Right. right, I'm a dentist, but you know, and I believe this for years and that's why we've been so vehement about really people making lifestyle changes. So when we so the fear is so why aren't they doing anything about it? It's just the fear of the dentist, the pain? The fear and the pain, but okay. if they understand that by treating their gum infection, once it's diagnosed, they're improving their overall health. So this laser zaps this chronic infection? Zaps the chronic infection away. You kill it. You kill it, remove the fine. bacteria. Can, the, can you take loose teeth and make them solid again? It can oftentimes take loose teeth and make them solid, along with other therapies. We may have to work with the bite adjusting the occlusion or the bite, the way the teeth fit together. Okay. So, you know, we really want to look at the whole condition and he see how to best affect it. But the laser is a fantastic way to remove the infection in a simple, one-visit, painless protocol. The other periodontists ask you, the ones that are doing the scraping and the cutting, the old style, do they ask you, hey, what do you think about the laser? Yeah, absolutely. They ask me, what do you think about the laser? What do you say to them? I tell them they should go get trained and, and start integrating it into their practice. It is a, um, an important component for our patients and for, as practitioners. You say so, there's a cosmetic uh, component to this. Randy, people don't want to smile. They've been told they have gum disease. They put it off. But, you know, they're, they have bad breath. They, have, they know they have this chronic disease. They don't want to smile. They don't want to be intimate. Let's face it, today people are living longer and longer. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're a very social society. 60s like the new 50. And people want to be able to enjoy their lives. But, you know, people come in every day. And I really, really have to listen to them to understand. And what do they say? What do they say? I mean, how does this interfere? You say it holds them back. It really does hold them back. Because not only do they realize that they have a major health issue, a risk factor for okay. cardiovascular conditions and a variety of other things, but they tend not to want to smile, tend not to want to be intimate. So they cover their smile up. You know, they'll come in speaking to me. They've, for really? so many years, they've been putting their hands over their mouth because of their breath or because of the way their teeth look as a result of the infection. Because if you're losing gum and bone, it's an extremely ugly, deforming disease. So once it goes on for 15 or 20 years, I mean, if you look in the mouth as someone that has this process going on. So it's a very on, slow growing It's a slow infection. debilitating infection, but it's ugly because the teeth get longer, they become unesthetic. So your message is, somebody's watching this, they have these symptoms, okay, bleeding gums, bad breath, receding gum. If you catch it early, you're saying, 
How many visits? I mean, could they go in? I mean, ideally, one day, once they've been diagnosed, yeah. zap it out with his laser. Right. Is that too simple? No. The way I'm saying it? I mean, Absolutely that's really not. That's how it works? That's how it works. So we'll do our diagnostic visit, and then we'll see them for their treatment in one visit. The important part is, after that, to manage their risk factors and come in for continued maintenance. So that's the key. And we were sitting in the green room, and you said, I spot it all the time. I see it in people's mouths all the time. And I got insecure. I didn't want to smile big around you. I mean, do you really see it all the time? Yeah, I do see it. And, you know, you can really tell when people have an infection in their mouth. You can smell it. You can see their teeth have moved. You can see the length of their teeth. So it's, it's simple for people to, to really self-diagnose. All they have to do is look in their mouth and so pay attention. So bright pink gums. Bright pink gums. That's gum disease. Yeah, absolutely. Bright pink gums. I see young people with that. Oh, the, the, so the and disease... You're that's, that's, that's an infection that you could zap out and it's taken care of. That's it. And really? you, you mentioned young people. You know, we see people from 18 to 70 to 80 to 90 for treatment. And, you know, one of the greatest things about utilizing this single visit laser technique is that we can treat people that are taking blood thinners. Um, we don't have to stop them because the laser light will coagulate the blood. So we don't have any problems. We don't have to cut the gums. So it's perfect for our elderly population. So no more cutting, no more stitching. No more cutting, no more stitching. Simply complete. In Could one another periodontist that watches this show send me an email and say, Randy, it's just not true. That laser is not as good as scraping it off the gum. I mean, could, could, could other dentists argue that you have to scrape it off? You well, can't do it with a laser. We, we still have to remove the tooth-associated bacteria and the tissue-associated. So we still are utilizing, after we lace, we do the first pass of the laser. Okay. Uh, and we'll show it on the animation. But then we also do clean the tooth of any surface secretions just to smooth it. And then we come through with the second pass of the laser, Randy, to seal up the site. So certainly... Um, I don't think there's a better way to remove infection. And I think retrospectively, as I said, we have 450 practitioners nationwide right now utilizing this technology. In another 10 years, it'll be the standard of care. It's FDA approved, um, and it is. But the challenge is getting people for early treatment. Early treatment's the key. Early treatment's the key, as with any disease So process. the fear is pain. The fear is pain. Most of the time. Absolutely pain. So and about possibly people? financial. You said that there are people out there that they've had one side of their mouth with the stitches and those kind of things. Right. When I okay. first, yeah, when I first imbibed, took this laser and utilized it for the first time, I had some patients that we had done traditional periodontal surgery on, and I did the other half with the laser. And because um, you couldn't get them back because it was so painful the first time? Exactly. Okay. But we got them back. And we did the other half of their mouth with the laser. And what'd they say? They couldn't believe that I didn't have this earlier. And that if they knew that it was going to be that easy, that they would have just had it all done at one time and would have never thought twice about it. Okay. So it's really provided the opportunity for people to leave feeling positive. Of course, coupled with our whole office approach, they're able to leave. I mean, they're really, getting massages during the during the treatment. Yeah, reflexology. And really? we tend to integrate that in because we really believe that um, we can stimulate the endocrine system or the body because remember when we remove this infection there are huge changes in your body you're removing a major infection as I said and that's took, not an overstatement at all by the way when you say that no not at all I mean if this infection weren't hiding under the gums and we took it out a mouthful of periodontal infection and put it on both hands it would it would cover both hands people would literally run to the doctor and say Randy what is going on with my health? Look at this infection on my arm. Okay. But it hides under the gums. People don't know it. They don't take it as a real health risk. So it's ignored. But there would be under no circumstances, if it were in any other part of the body, would anyone ignore it. So get it diagnosed first. Get it you diagnosed. You can go to your general dentist. You can go to your what general you dentist. Give me a yeah, gum most, check. For, yeah, you check. call them pockets? Pocket, yeah, we want to do pocket probing depth. And that is uh, six points around the tooth to check the health of the gums. Um, and certainly your general dentist can do that, but we advocate, uh, particularly our adult patients, to come see a periodontist because, again, we are specialists in adult dentistry, diagnosis, 
treatment of gum disease, which is extremely prevalent in the adult population. As I said, 75% of uh, people walking around today have some form of gum disease. It's the leading so cause of tooth loss. It's also about saving your teeth. It's about saving your teeth. It becomes with one tooth. It starts with one tooth, and then it becomes two teeth, then three teeth, then four teeth, and then, you know, your teeth shift. It's this big cataclysmic event. Now, you know, on the phone you said, Randy, that these people, uh, in some cases, we give them their life back. Yeah, we do. We really do. Really? Because I mean, how, really? I, I laugh because it sounds like an yeah, exaggeration. I mean, it really provides an opportunity for a lot of people to regain their health, okay? okay? Because it's an impetus. I mean, they may not have heart disease or diabetes or other issues, but they have gum disease because it's so prevalent. Once they take the initial step to treat the infection and remove the infection, right, they now have taken the first step towards controlling their own health. And they begin many times to, you know, stop smoking. Really? Yeah. To eat healthier, to take vitamins, to do things that, again, almost to lose weight, whatever it is. When they commit to their oral health, they really commit to their overall health. So what about the people that are really bad off? Yeah. Their mouths a mess. Yeah, their what mouths are a mess. Become too late. It's you know they come in and they're even embarrassed for me to look in their mouth. You said have, that. Yeah. Have, have you ever seen a mouth this bad, doctor? That's do they what, say that? Yeah. And we that's what we do every day, and we're here to help our patients. So we we don't judge, but what we do want to do is facilitate first and foremost removing the infection. And again, as I said today with the laser, Randy, we can do it in one visit. But then no okay. cutting. So you got no rid pain. Of it, but they want a beautiful smile. Now what? Right. So, I mean, so do you then do that part of the we'll, we'll develop a treatment plan if they need to replace missing teeth with dental implants. Um, if we can't save their teeth, we can convert them to uh, teeth in a day with dental implants. And we often will work with their restoring dentist or cosmetic dentist to provide either veneers, caps, crowns, or bridges when needed. So we're, so we're really... people that say, I have bad gums. Okay, so I can't get veneers or whatever. That's I, right. People ask me because of the show, they email me in. So you're saying that this is periodontal disease, it's gum disease, that if they catch it early, yeah, because they can have, loose teeth. They can have all of the dentistry done that they need. But then they could get. Then they can have the caps and crowns and everything else. But it's like this. It's like building a house. So you got to build the foundation first. So that's why periodontics or treating periodontal disease is the most critical component of your dental health. Okay, so this not, laser has made it fun for you. It really you has said. made it fun. And I In think the old days it was a big drag, right? Yeah. Doing gum disease, it, scraping. And, oh, it was. Because you were hurting the patient. Well, I mean, you pain, knew the patient was going to be uncomfortable. It's very difficult uh, surgically to provide, you know, that procedure. Um, it took a lot of energy from the practitioner. But, you know, I talked to my colleagues throughout the world that are utilizing the laser procedure to treat gum disease. And, you know, everyone is just astounded as to the patient response and the clinical results. So the people are just really raving about this technology. Okay. And but it again, works. It, it works, without a doubt. And, but the bottom line is this. It all comes back to diagnosis. Get diagnosed early, come in early, have a diagnosis, and treat early. But you say there's a psychology of tooth loss. The people, it makes them feel older. It really Did they tell you this on the consult? Yeah, it, you know, tooth loss is debilitating. Not only the, the ramifications of it, the bone loss, the hollowing of the jaws, the resorptive process, but you know, when we restore smiles, people can chew with confidence. They can go out, they can smile. So I understand this correctly. Okay, so if you have gum disease, your teeth may be a little wobbly. Sure, they're loose. wobbly, they're you sore. Can't really people can't eat comfortably. But that's stopped. I mean, I mean, help me understand. So you do this treatment on the ideal candidate, whatever the candidate yeah, might be. Right. Stop the infection. How do the teeth, I mean, once they're loose, is yeah. it too late at the, that point though? No, because no? What's, what's amazing is that the light provides uh, the, an opportunity for the laser the body. light. You're yeah, talking the about. laser okay. light provides a stimulatory effect on the cells of the human body, in particular the cells of the oral cavity. This particular laser has been designed only for periodontal disease treatment. So it stimulates the cells and the attachment around the teeth to heal itself, actually healing the gum, the bone, and the tissues that hold teeth in. So people can, you know, eat comfortably, go out and eat a steak. They don't have bad breath. They can kiss their, their spouse. So they're really able to live their lives, in particular, as they age. 
I mean, there's nothing worse than not having your own teeth. And anyone who says they're comfortable wearing dentures is absolutely just adjusted to that. Okay. Because there's no way you can be comfortable eating mush. Okay, so it started somewhere. It started somewhere. So if you got these people early enough. Absolutely. This is your opinion. Yeah. Early on in this process, with the laser, you probably could have stopped it. Right. And, it's, of course, if they followed your protocols. That's cetera, right. If they're diagnosed themselves. and treated early. And that's a critical component. So by seeing a periodontist, Randy, we're able to diagnose them and then provide them with a variety of treatment options because it's not only about treating the infection. It's also about restoring. Oftentimes, I may have to take out teeth at the time that we do the laser gum treatment. We may have to build up the bone to replace teeth with dental implants. So by seeing a specialist, we're able to provide a variety of different procedures to restore your oral health so general at one visit. Also, does it, is this laser in the hands of general dentists also? Yeah, yes. Okay. They, there's, yes. So you probably have a bias. You think that they should see a periodontist. Yeah. I, I mean, what's the advantage? Yeah. We're, we're specifically... I mean, does the machine do all the work? No, the, certainly, it's, again, it's about diagnosis. Okay. It's technique sensitive, and because it requires a knowledge of occlusion, of bone, of the overall oral condition, certainly um, it is more advantageous to see your periodontist. Because, again, as I said, we're going to be able to provide other treatments, such as implants, extractions, reparative procedures on the gum, on the bone, to, again, build the foundation for beautiful teeth. Because at the end of the day, we're not talking about um, anything but providing people the opportunity to live a healthier life. To get their smile back. Yeah, get their smile back. Have their teeth. Chew with function. And have it done in a very, very simple, painless way, in a non-threatening way, so that they leave back in control of their life. So it doesn't really hurt hurt that much. I mean, uh, it's not something they complain about, I should say. No, I have. Is that I, true? That is absolutely correct. Um, we don't have nearly the complaints postoperatively, as I said earlier, that we had. Um, patients are taking maybe some Advil here and there. But the real important part is, is that they now are able to feel more comfortable knowing that this infection is, is removed. I always get this from the doctors. They'll say that people that, whether it's a heart surgeon, uh, an orthopedic guy, that the specialist will watch, the same type of other orthopedic surgeons will watch their show. So the same thing will happen with you. Dentists will watch this show. And dentists will watch the show that are very skeptical, because I've talked to them about this laser for gum disease. What do you want them to know about this laser in your community, yeah, the other dentist? I, I think you know it's absolutely something worth looking at for the general dentist to provide this level of care. Again, I work with a variety, 65 general dentists in the state of Pennsylvania, um, and my goal is to be able to provide them with unbiased information and educate them. Because let's face it, what I really do is provide education and support for but my it works. patients. It works. It works. Absolutely. Well, that's the, the, the main yeah. point here. Yeah, it absolutely works. So if we back up 10 years ago, Okay, with you, periodontist. Yeah, you were doing the sur for gum disease. You were this this root planing, scraping, pulling, surgery, pulling the gums away from okay. the teeth. And there's still guys materials. doing that even today. Sure. And, okay. And what about now? How often do you do that procedure for gum disease? I don't do it at all because if I give really a patient the option of traditional surgery versus having the opportunity to utilize a minimally invasive technique such as the laser, everyone chooses to have the laser for good reasons because they don't want to have their gums pulled away from the teeth and cut they don't want to have them sutured they want to have a minimally invasive technique and look let's face it most of the surgical techniques in all aspects of medicine or dentistry are going minimally invasive so the laser really is the future it's the future for but the But this laser is a little bit different. It is different. It's, it's the only one FDA approved for, for the periodontitis. That's right. That right? For periodontitis. Because in San Diego, we talked on the phone, by the way. You made me on the phone feel like maybe I had it. Couldn't really find a doctor out here with one of these lasers, one of the Perilace lasers. Right. Um, there are other lasers that have been uh, marketed to treat gum infection, but there is no other laser that is FDA approved. In your town, let me, let, me, let me understand this, put this in perspective. In your town, would you say more than 100 of these cutting 
and stitches procedures are being done a month by other dentists? I mean, this, is it that common? Not, not maybe just in the small town, but, you know, within a... Sure, sure, absolutely. And it's happening every day. Every day, every and day. And it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Really? No. Absolutely Get the not. laser. Get it done that way. Get the, get the laser. Provide a minimally invasive, comfortable, single visit protocol. Again. You can say single visit. You're big on the single visit. You're big on this experience, yeah. uh, aromatherapy, yeah, all Yeah, because, this sort of stuff. you know, most of the reason that periodontal patients don't come back is because they've had one collagen treated of scraping of the gums, right? Eight, ten years ago, right? Th they will not come back for the next procedure because that's how... Not uncomfortable necessarily during the procedure, but afterwards. It's just not a happy procedure. So of all areas of dentistry, the treatment of gum disease was pretty much the most painful? Pretty much in a way? the most uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, I should yeah. say, after the procedure. Exactly. And patients developed a real fear of having any other treatment done. Great. So final message. Somebody watching this, uh, maybe they're skeptical or maybe they fit into the category of uh, gum disease. What do you say to them? Call your general dentist. Call us directly. Okay. For the people that know they have gum disease, take care of it now. You Call will, you now. Get yeah, in there tomorrow. Get in there because you're, you're going to save yourself a lot of health-related issues. You are going to save your, yourself a lot of time and, of course, a lot of expense because dental management is an investment. Okay. Let's face it. So um, all aspects are easier the earlier we diagnose and the earlier we treat. We won't have to do a mouthful of implants and complex restorative dentistry. catch it early. Yeah. Okay, good. Catch it early. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Very interesting. Thank good you, Randy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Really You're enjoyed watching it. The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, visit our website. Or if you want to point a friend uh, that may have gum disease, friend of yours or, or a loved one, go to wellnesshour.com. You can uh, just punch in gum disease and you can see it all over again. So for now, I wish you good help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.